Hi, welcome to Art Den, where we meet artists who live in Kirklees and the surrounding area and hear their stories. I'm Judy Hinchley, and with me in the studio today is Jake Reed of Fracture Gallery. Jake challenges our perceptions of a just society with works that expose the inequalities of everyday life. His preferred medium is spray paint, but instead of being sprayed on walls and in skate parks, his tongue-in-cheek works are now found on canvases. Jake is the founder of Fracture Gallery, an up-and-coming art space which champions local, non-London artists. Join us as we delve into Jake's experiences as an artist and discover the stories behind his artistic journey. Hi, Jake. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. No, it's a pleasure to be here. Great, great. How are you doing? You're good? Yeah, yeah, lovely. Fabulous. Great. Nice and great stuff. <laughs> yeah, let's all go into the questions. So, how would you describe your artistic style and what techniques do you use? Yeah, so um, really, I kind of am inspired by three different styles it's pop art and it's abstract, and it's also street art. So, um, I've always been in awe of street art and how it's just it's just out there on walls, everyone can see it. It's not like in a gallery or anything like that. It's just a it's just kind of like levels the playing field for everyone, so everyone can see it and experience it. Um, I've also been a fan of like spray painting for a while. And then in terms of like the abstract, I quite like just kind of it kind of just being like more emotional than anything else. It's kind of just like everything's just laid out there. You can mess around with like the textures and kind of just the feeling. So that's kind of why I really like abstractism and also like pop art, kind of the the idea of like the the 60s kind of style, the kind of the cool collected kind of thing, um, like really, really inspires me, definitely. Um, so the techniques I use, uh, as I mentioned before, I do use like spray paint in my yeah, work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, originally it was quite like um, freehand but um, I've always been like more of a drawer mm -hmm. so I've used like a lot of stencils in my work now and that kind of allows me to like kind of like layer things a lot more and work on um, kind of like repetition so sometimes uh, like even on these pieces like the smaller pieces I've made like multiple versions of that and kind of it's easier for me to like store my work and kind of like catalogue it really. Nice, uh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds like a lot of fun. And what um, what subjects do you like to paint? Um, and where do you find your inspiration? Yeah, so I use um, I kind of have a different kind of subjects. It's kind of a weird one. So uh, I kind of like brands and things like that. Like kind of flipping the script on them and kind of just making poking a little bit of fun at them. Um, so, for example, I did this. Uh, I did this art piece that rips on. I don't know if you've seen these. Um, this clothing brand, H Hood Paw, uh, Hood Rich. Sorry, <laughs> that's what it's called. Yeah, I think uh, that. I think yeah. That one. So yeah. I kind of flipped it around and like made it like Hood Paw to kind of All right. kind of have this thing about you know, especially with like the cost of living crisis and things like that. Mm -hmm. People are really struggling and mm -hmm. kind of like highlighting highlighting those facts. Um, like also like. Uh, Nike, I, I, I changed it to Strike, so it's kind of that whole thing about kind of like ripping on um, the big brands. Um, also, I quite like, um, like funnily enough, like portraiture, mm -hmm. like not your typical kind of portrait. I've never been very good like drawing people, so I've kind of like leaning more towards the cartoon aspect. Uh, I like to call it like anti-realism so you can see with this piece here like and even the one above the, the one above me here as well it's it's got eyes it's got a face mm -hmm. but it all looks a bit it all looks a bit different and like outer worldly so um, yeah it was something that surprised me about my work um, but yeah there's, there's quite a lot of portraiture in it really. Great great fabulous and what what challenges have you faced in your life and how has art helped you to overcome them? Yeah, so um, I really started making art when I had like a, a serious like knee injury. Um, I was like 
bed bound for like a good couple of months and it was kind of like a way to like rehabilitate myself I suppose Mm -hmm. kind of you know I had like many hours of the day when I weren't doing much so I kind of like picked up the pen and started drawing again and it um yeah it really helped um just like emotionally and kind of kind of um yeah it just it just helped a lot just helped me kind of express myself a lot more great fantastic could you tell me a bit about your artistic journey and what led you to begin making art now so when you were saying that so you 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 went back to drawing Mm um do you maybe done some not long before Mm. or how's it all gone you know yeah yeah of course so i um really Uh, I distinctly remember when I was a child, like drawing uh, for school, we did like this play Pandora's box, like a Greek mythology or something like that. Mm -hmm. And um, we was tasked to draw like Pandora's box itself, you know, like her opening the box and like all this random crazy stuff coming out and then like hope coming out at the end as well. So I I did like a little drawing of that. And I remember uh, like my teachers marking it saying it's very good. So that's kind of like one of my earliest memories of drawing. Mm -hmm. And then like fast forward a few years when I'm at school and things, um, I never, I never took art like super seriously. I'd always just like sketch stuff like, like in the back of like my science book or my bass book or stuff, you know, like that. Um, Never, never really taking it seriously. And then, yeah, just had a bit of a hiatus uh, with doing art, like not really like making much art. Um, I did a, like, I touched on like design and things like that, like graphic design, but then um, I'm not the best with computers. So that kind of wasn't the direction I was going to go in. And then kind of like now I'm realizing that I can like make art instead. I think that's definitely like um, my wheelhouse like painting and um working on canvases really yeah uh, yeah it's a bit more free it's not so much um methodical uh, yeah. which i like it absolutely fabulous so you moved to Huddersfield recently uh how has this affected your practice yeah so like a massive amount like um like i moved uh moved up here like a couple of months before I had my accident and it's um yeah it's been great like it's allowed me to yeah just work on my pieces like I don't know if I would have gone back to art if I hadn't if I hadn't moved here so it's kind of a good a good feeling good um that I've like come here um yeah and it's great like it's a bit different like I've been working on like Huddersfield inspired pieces as well so like down there we've got the metro yeah, got sign yeah, yeah. Uh, which I'm working on like a bigger piece for that as well that should um, be done in a couple of months so uh, yeah I'll be able to like showcase that one and then you know working with like Huddersfield working on colours of the giants and Huddersfield town and things yeah, yeah. Um, I'm actually like planning on doing one about uh, Emily Moore and Ca- Castle Hill as well oh, so yeah. that would yeah, be yeah. kind of like a another like taken kind of appreciation of uh, Huddersfield so um, yeah just like planning that stuff yeah fabulous but it's like a real transformation in your life wasn't it yeah when you, uh, when you uh, moved to Huddersfield and when all of this happened it's like a whole new chapter in your in your in your life yeah exactly exactly yeah, yeah. yeah um i wouldn't say i was like super creative when i when i was living in london um like i used to oh i still do i like playing music and things like that mm. um but it's just kind of exploded more since i moved here really so um yeah excited fabulous can you tell me about Fracture Gallery and your hopes for this year? Yeah, so um, Fracture Gallery is kind of like, I guess, uh, if you want to say like the parent company, the parent gallery where I kind of like want to showcase my work. So um, like I met you, Judy, when I was doing a um, an exhibition in um, the Piazza. Um, we're like showcasing like all the pieces I recently made, but I really want to kind of like make it uh, a bit less about me and kind of get more artists involved mm-hmm. um like doing commissions and things like that so 
the plan is this year to have like a couple of exhibitions um it's been a bit of a struggle trying to get like a proper trying to get it like properly done there's been some like knockbacks and everything like that so i'm just currently trying to try to get back trying to get back on form really um but yeah the plan is to like i have some friends who are artists like do some get some commissions from them and also like just like finding new artists uh, in the local area and getting them to yeah getting them to like do pieces um well also like i'm i'm doing this like competition it's it's called a uh, art ballot and basically it's where um like other art like a bunch of artists can come together and like vote on their like favorite pieces mm -hmm. um which kind of gives it like a bit more fairness to it like i'm not the one who's like saying oh this person is the best mm -hmm. it's more like a i like to call it like a democratic art competition yeah yeah because um like I myself uh I found it quite hard and I kind of want to give more people opportunities to kind of get involved and things so we'll be launching that um soon great fabulous can you tell me about the artists you admire and the artistic styles that have influenced you now you've already mentioned um you know street art and things like that is there any other ones that you haven't mentioned in there? yeah so um I kind of I kind of have like I'd like to call it the three B's. My my three favourite artists they're um, Francis Bacon, uh, Banksy, and uh, Basquiat. So they're kind of all different in their own way. So like Francis Bacon, what I kind of like about him is his like his like strange approach to like making art. Like it's always a bit like disfigured and it's all a bit like ugly and it's not like perfect. Um, that's what I like about him and it's always a bit makes you feel a bit uneasy you know I'm never that um literal um but I kind of like to bring that like essence to, to my pieces mm -hmm. um and Banksy like I mean everyone knows who Banksy is yeah and I some... thought you, I was sure you'd be saying Banksy <laughs> yeah. I thought you would anyway <laughs> <laughs> because yeah I mean he's just notable everyone knows him and um I don't know like when you see his works like you know well I know that is his works but I also know that like everyone can just it's just like instantly relatable and whenever he does anything like you know he's gonna get a million likes everyone everyone knows about his pieces and also like I don't know just like his artworks like worth millions I mean I'd, I'd be nice to get something like that <laughs> one day you know For sure. <laughs> absolutely yeah definitely. yeah yeah and um, just like Basquiat like I think he's uh, again kind of like this abstractness of his pieces they're always just like just like crazy elaborate they like work on like a lot of different materials something that I kind of like to bring into my pieces so like this um this larger piece it kind of has like all sorts in it it's got spray paint like acrylic paint like markers and everything so um something that I can really really appreciate um like I went on holiday uh, to to LA like last year and it was like I first time I saw his pieces and you know you just have these massive pieces uh just on like bits of wood and things like that and it's just quite quite emotive and like provocative really so mm -hmm. that's kind of kind of why I like his work fabulous yeah excellent yeah yeah thank you thinking about your own finished works of art can you describe a piece that makes you feel particularly proud or happy mm -hmm. and can you say why it makes you feel that way yeah so um i'd say it's this piece here this um um this one in the middle because yeah. it was like my first piece i made when um i started to make art again and um i'd say like the styles kind of the style is kind of my style like i think i can look at that and just be like that's like the blueprint of all the works that i've made since like okay. it's a mixture of different materials um i'm quite i quite like fonts and things like that and uh, letters lettering structure so mm -hmm. there's a bit of that in there and also it just kind of just makes me happy like i remember just being in my flat and it kind of being like half empty and i'm just like as I, funnily enough as i was painting my flat i was i was painting this canvas so like the yellow in it it's like the yellow on my walls basically so it's uh oh, it's like part of my home i, I guess <laughs> oh that's a little like it's like uh yeah i can see why that means a lot to you <laughs> yeah brilliant. 
So um, just a little bit about when and where you paint. When and where do you paint? A lot of people paint in different places, you know. And um, also, how easy is it for you to stop once you've started? Yeah, so I really um, like, I, I used to paint in my spare room, um, but now like my partner's moved in, so like all of her stuff's in there. So I'm kind of finding it a bit difficult to uh, find a place to paint currently because um, I use like spray paint and it's quite toxic. I mean, I shouldn't really be painting in the spare room anyway. So it's kind of a blessing in a way, but, um, but yeah, that is where I kind of do my main stuff. Um, but I also do like, you know, just drawing in the living room and things like that. Um, I mean, I, I don't commute anymore, so I used to always like draw like when I was commuting, like just little tidbits. Um, so yeah, it's kind of anywhere I can basically. I'd yeah. say, um, I'd say that. So I like to, I like to like sketch and things. Mm -hmm. So I'd like sketch just in my, like my living room and then like do the painting in the spare, in the spare room. Um, yeah, sorry, what was the yeah, second yeah. bit of that? Oh yeah, the second bit of that is, how easy is it for you to stop once you've started? For me to stop? Um, yeah. it's, it's, it's okay, it's, uh, I can control myself. Sometimes I do get in the zone and like just focus, like it can, sometimes it can take me, I can be you know, like doing it for hours on end basically. Um, but I can, yeah, I can manage to, Control it, I'd say, to a to a degree. Um, I need some tips. I'm awful. <laughs> <laughs> Hours. <laughs> but yeah, you don't have a problem with that. You can just do it. Yeah, yeah I can just do it. Sometimes it's hard to kind of get in the zone. I suppose sometimes it can be it can be quite difficult. Um, but funnily enough, like sometimes it can take me. It can like there's some pieces I've been working on for like a year, so. Mm -hmm. It, in a way it's kind of a good thing because you can like focus um not necessarily focus but sometimes you can just sometimes it's just not ready yet you know and then you can see something and it can like change your perspective on it so um that's kind of the good thing about like just leaving it and just letting letting it settle if you don't have anything that you've that you're thinking if you don't know what you want to do about it it's good to just leave it sometimes yeah. Um, yeah, I would. Oh, oh, there was something else I wanted to say, but I can't remember. Yeah, well, that comes back to you. Um, so, uh, in terms of your personal identity and your sense of who you are, how important to you is being an artist? Yeah, I'd say it's quite important because I'm not. <laughs> it's like the best thing I'm good good at, to be honest. You know, I think. Um, I know some people say you kind of have like born with it. I guess in a way I am like born with it to a degree and it's just kind of a great, a great lesson for me to just be creative. It's a great way to express myself really. I, I do enjoy, mm. I do enjoy like making art. Um, yeah. But I do, so I would say that, you know, people, pe all people have like some creativity in them. So I'd, I'd just like, just yeah just express it i guess nice fabulous that's really good and finally you pretty much ans answered this but um just to sum it up there's a good one so i would ask everybody to sum up their reason for painting or making art you know so just really summing it up why do you paint um i'd say i paint because in a weird way, it's kind of like a way for me to like document like my feelings and my ideas um, and kind of like my opinions on like certain issues and things like that. It gives me in a weird way, like I have watched this show like Fake or Fortune, like I can imagine like, I don't know, 50 years down the line, someone like looks at my work and they can kind of see like, I don't know, like the current events or like the history of the world that I like I'm seeing. Mm. I kind of think it's a good way to like, yeah, like document, document things, to be honest. Cause, yeah, fabulous. Because, yeah, like, you know, before like, before like Google or whatever, before the internet, before like newspapers, it was all about like the art, you know, it's kind of a way to document absolutely. like things. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, good one. Yeah. That's really great. Absolutely. So, 
thank you for joining us. Um, you know, it's been really great. Yeah, um, it was. Really enjoyed talking to you about it and hear about those things. And, you know, I just really love it because everyone's got like a different angle on different it. Different spin on things, yeah, yeah, no, but things like why they paint. You know, mm -hmm. and I just find it fascinating to. Yeah, know, definitely. So yeah, so um, to the audience, thank you very much for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe to Kirtley's Local TV on YouTube to get our latest videos first. We'll see you again soon. Smash him. Can we get a cup of tea? Yeah, let's do it. Oh, okay, <laughs> let's do it.